All right, so I just finished up changing a couple of the seals on the swivel joint on my Bobcat E42 excavator. And this was the first time I've done this. It wasn't easy. It wasn't the most impossible thing, but with the right tools, you can get the job done and you just have to be careful. If you have any sort of mechanical inclination at all, you could probably do this yourself. Just be really careful with several things. Let me show you what was the problem was and how I did it. So the swivel joint, is the connection between the top half of the excavator and the bottom half of the excavator that allows the hydraulic fluid to transfer to the tracks, to the final drive on the tracks, and to the grating blade. And so the swivel joint allows the machine to spin independently the top from the bottom and still allow the fluid to transfer down below and back. The swivel joint has a couple of main seals on it. They're called the crown seals. There's one at the top of the joint and one at the bottom. And this crown seal, I cut this. This is, <laughs> when I got it off, I cut it to get it off. You can see that the seal is, is kind of flat. There's a flat spot, it's a war flat spot on it. And this is like a plastic or silicone kind of material. And this is the bottom seal. This is in better shape. You can see this still has some of the ridges on it, but I replaced it anyway. So the top one is what was leaking. It was letting, letting fluid out. Yeah, I saw a puddle beneath the excavator and then took a few panels off and found it. But anyway, during the process, I also replaced, oh yeah, with these seals, there's an inner ring too. These go inside and they slide up over the half of the swivel joint. So anyway, put those on. The book says you want to heat them up in hydraulic fluid, 100 and 30 degrees for three minutes and it'll soften them up and make them a little more pliable so you kind of have to stretch them on to get them into position and uh, these are just plastic uh, nylon spacers that help the swivel joint go back together it's pretty easy to take the swivel joint apart you just need snap ring pliers and then um, just tap the inner housing out from the outer and these spacers is what closes the gap and allows the snap ring to, to work this one was broken. I don't know if it really matters all that much, but if these things are broken or not, it's more the thickness that's important with those. So anyway, to do the job, first I blocked it up. And the next thing I did was drained the, the uh, hydraulic fluid reservoir. If you take this panel off, there's four bolts here. There's a drain hose. You can drain the fluid out of that. That'll just make a lot less of a mess when you go in to do the job. And then the next step is taking off these two pedals, four bolts, 15 millimeter socket. Take this rubber mat out. And then there's a plate down there. There's, I think six bolts, six, uh, 15 millimeter socket will do those. And there's, an, there's a front plate that you can kind of move out of place. And once you get those there, you can see the swivel joint. The swivel joint's right under here. It's tight. You'll see in the video it is tight, but you can get to it with um, the right wrenches. I used some crow's foot um, open end. 24 millimeter was my friend. 19 was my friend. And this little wobbler was also my friend. And some extensions and a ratchet. Also what was helpful were service wrenches, just short little open end wrenches, 24, 19, 14. Yeah, and then I was just taking a bunch of hoses off. So you can do the top side, before you do those actually, down here, there's a plate right there. Can't quite see it, but there's four bolts. Hold that plate on. Take the, that quarter inch plate off, and from the bottom side, you can access the, the bottom eight hoses. So there's, I think there's around eight lines on the top, eight on the bottom, just take them all apart. And then there are four bolts that hold the swivel joint in place and kind of maneuver it out and do your work on a bed. Probably took me three hours to take everything apart, maybe an hour to 
disassemble and reassemble the swivel joint and two to three to put it all back together. If I had to do it again, I could do a lot quicker. Obviously, second time through is quicker. Um, but anyway, watch this video and see for yourself how it goes. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like the video, hit the this button down below. Very certain it's these crown seals. That's what they're called. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. And they look like this brand new. See they have little ridges on them? You can see this one here, it's worn worn almost flat. It's not even there's not even much of a ridge on it. You can see where they used to be. Well, I was doing some maintenance to the mini and noticed a pool of fluid beneath it. Not a good sign usually. It's dry now because I just moved it onto the trailer, but you see a few little drips under there. Did a little further investigation. Take the panel off. And looky here. There is a lot of hydraulic fluid around that swivel joint. So guess what I'm gonna be doing for the next few days. For anybody else wanting to do this, uh, I want you to learn from my trials. So I'm gonna take it over to the farm and wash it, clean it. Got the mini in the shop to fix a leaking swivel joint. Got her blocked up. A little extra safety there. Jack stands. This allows the machine to swivel and still send hydraulics from the top to the bottom back to the top. So, so words leaking you can see there's some fluid coming out there i think there's a seal around that that it's probably gone bad this machine only has 2000 hours but the plan here is to first drain hydraulic fluid then i can just label all these hoses detach all the hoses from the top side and then detach them from the bottom side then there's those four bolts there so the first step is to drain hydraulic fluid reservoir it's right there See them already a little low. Do it like that. There's the drain. See that cap on the end? Just need to take that cap off. Step one. Lock up excavator. Remove floor mat and floor panel. Drain hydraulic reservoir. Remove four bolts from the pan underneath. Step three, mark and remove hoses. And you remove the hoses from the top and side of swivel joint. So to get to this, you gotta take these two guys off first. The two pedals, 15 millimeter. And then you can remove the mat. So first you take that off, and then there's the rubber mat. You take the rubber mat off, and then it exposes some, some bolts here to take off. One, two, three, four, maybe five. You can take this off. A little more room. Not much, but a little. Careful these lines. Now I'm going to mark the hoses. Well, you know, since they're already marked, I don't need to mark them. I took a picture. Two reds is on the left, one red is on the right, one green here, and I guess and maybe two greens behind it. Alright, I'm thinking we're gonna get a little bit of fluid out coming from underneath that when I open it. 
Here's the bottom of the swivel joint. So you can see there's all these hydraulic lines. Um, the two going off that way, those two are for the blade. See they go to each side of the cylinder. And then there's two big ones that come off of this side, two big ones that come off the other side, and those go to the drive motors. And then there's these little ones that go to each side. There's a little fluid there. How much? One down. really crank them on. Let's see if I got this one. Yep. Before I get too far ahead, I wanted to show you how I got that last fitting down there. Crow foot on a swivel. Hooked in. Hooked in right here. Just like that. Came up here with a breaker bar. Alright, here's the bottom side. I got a couple of these off so far. These two red one was on the bottom. Now I'm loosening this guy here and just making my way around, trying not to get rained on, but catching some of it. So I got all the hoses on the bottom side removed. They weren't too bad. The heart, the top was much harder. There was a little more room to work on the bottom. The problem with the bottom was just getting dripped on with hydraulic fluid. So got all the hoses disconnected from the bottom side and the top side. I removed the four bolts that hold the swivel joint in place. Once you remove the bolts out, then you can just, you can pick this thing up and turn it. If you turn it 90 degrees, it'll drop straight down through that hole. And by the way, that's what we had for hydraulic fluid in the reservoir.
got these jumbo snap ring player set, 16 inches. No. Somewhere in there. There it comes. There she is. Slowly release, slowly. There we go. on this top side. What a cool piece of equipment. Let's just appreciate what we're looking at right here. That allows the machine to spin 360 degrees and still send fluid through it. So cool. So that little port, each one of those little ports connects to a port up here through this. So there's a channel in there that somehow gets to the top. And then each of these rings line up with these verticals, like here's a ring here, there's a ring, there's a ring at the bottom. That's the next one up, next one, next one, next one. But if only they can make a better seal. Hello in there. All right, I got my new seals. And it's reading the instructions. It says heat crown seals and seal and seals in hydraulic oil for three minutes at 130 degrees before installing the seals on the rotor. Very certain it's these crown seals. That's what they're called. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. And they look like this brand new. See, they have little ridges on them. You can see this one here, it's worn, worn almost flat. It's not even, there's not even much of a ridge on it. You can see where they used to be, but I think that's the, I think that's the problem. So look at that, yeah, profile. First, I'm going to take off the old seal. Let's pick, oh, it's not too bad. There's two parts to it. There's this outer part, and then there's the inner. I probably could just cut this off and make it a lot easier to get off. That's it. Look at that thing. Flat. And once again, I'm going to just cut it. Let's get it off of there. Right, that's the old one. Which really doesn't look that bad, but...
in there. Just want another hand, make sure it doesn't tip over and make sure it just kind of out after it goes down in the groove. I wonder if yeah. there's a way you could keep it from going into the groove and start it on the next one before it bends a long ways down on the next one. Hold it down right next to come my way more right there. Wow. Gee. It is going to be. Hi, Judge. No, I got to slide over that. Oh, it's a pie on the side. There you go. There we go. Oh man. Over the black one? Yep. It's a two piece. Both of them combined. I think it'd be really good. Well, why are you doing this one instead of a black one next? There's a black. I already put the black one on. Right? Oh. There we go. We'll see. Yeah. What? That's it. That's it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I thought we were going to have to do one in every one of these grooves. Lower it a little bit. Challenge was getting this lined up uh, on the swivel in the right rotation. So that these four bolts also lined up so we had to take it first what we did is we put a white mark where it needed to be we took it out and we just manually swiveled this to where it needed to be and then we lift it back up and in 
All right, got the bottom done. This went together a lot faster than taking it apart. Got the four bolts back in. All hydraulic lines connected. Time to move to the top side. Well, I'm about halfway finished on the top side. Um, this joint right here has a little C-clip under it, or E-clip. You have to pry that plastic off, and, and that's where that, that, that holds this, this fitting on. And then these other guys screw on. You can change the angle of them. There's a little jam nut with a there's a little jam nut with an O-ring, so we can get this angle where you want it, get that angle where you want it. This one here was the, probably the trickiest so far. I had to loosen a jam nut to get that fitting to a point where I could get a wrench on it, tighten up the fitting first, and then tighten up the jam nut. So this one's loose still. I might do that last. It depends how these go in. So I've got these four and then this one. So five more, that's it. All right, here is my rig on how I tightened and loosened and tightened that hydraulic fitting. Used a 24 millimeter crow foot wobbler on the end of it ratchet so this is what it looked like well i've got the whole thing put back together not the whole thing but the important stuff and i'm assuming i'm going to have to add a little more hydraulic fluid fill it up to that point going to start it up I know there's going to be some air in the system, so I'm going to have to work it. The blade up and down, I can't really do much about my tracks at the moment. I don't, I don't think I want to take it off of this yet. You know what? I could, I could lift it up in the air and run the tracks. And that could help purge some of the, the air out of the system. So, all right, we'll start it up and see what happens. <laughs> 